Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, I hope you're ready to have your head scrambled. Uh, but let's start out softly. First, I've got my object loaded. I'm in the shading tab. I've got a principled shader applied to it and I'm going to enable viewport shading. I'm using the cycles render engine here as well. So I am going to be using the principled shader here. And the first thing that I'm going to add to this node tree is a noise texture. So shift A and search for noise texture. Plug that into the normal, then search for a bump node. Add that between the noise texture and the principled shader and move this connector up to the height. Change the scale to 15, the detail to 15 and the roughness to one. And then the strength on the bump node to 0 0.05 and the distance to 0 0.05. Right. Now, any changes here? No, we're going to control these elsewhere. Okay, the next thing that we need is another principal shader. In fact, let me not duplicate that. Let me add it so that we've got a fresh one to start with. A Voronoi texture. second Voronoi texture and a math node. On the top Voronoi texture we're going to change the scale to 10. On the bottom one we're changing the um, oh, what do you call it? Oops. The feature output to distance to edge and changing the scale on that to 10 as well. We're going to plug those two into the math node uh, using the color output from the top one and use comparison less than. Now we're going to mix these two shaders together. And we're going to use the value from this math node to be the factor. So let's bring that down. Let's bring that down. I won't make any changes to this just now. We'll come back to that in a bit. I do however need to add a mapping node and a texture coordinate. And I'm going to bring that out because we're going to connect that up to a fair few things. It needs to be connected to both Voronoi textures initially. You can already see some bits and pieces across here. Next up, I'm going to duplicate all of this, bring it down, connect up the mapping node and the vector, and oops, mix these two mix shaders, mix in the mix shaders using the value from the math node um, that's the second math node as the factor. And we are going to change the scale to 20 on the top one and 5 on the bottom one. Okay, now I need another copy of this. 
bring it down the bottom, connect up the mapping nodes to the Voronoi textures. So you move that so it's a bit more even. And again, I'm going to mix the mix shaders. And we're using this bottom math node. Sorry, it's so small right now, but you can see the scale of it um, into that factor. Let's zoom back in there. For the scale on this one, we're using 15 and 15. Right. Now I need to make sure I'm using the object um, texture coordinate. Okay, now to make things a little easier from here on in, what I am going to do is select all of this except for the material output and then press Control G to group it. This now gives us a group input slot. So we're going to start at the top and we are going to connect up first the top principal shader's base color. Then we're going to connect up the next slot with the base color of the next principal shader. And so that we don't get confused, we are going to change the names. So we go into where it says group, select where it says base color, and where it says name, we'll just type color one. So you can see how that's changed it in the group input. Repeat that again for the second one. And call this one color two. And then again, for the last one. So we might need to bring that down a bit. Color three. Okay, so we're also going to control four other aspects uh, with this group input. We're going to control the specular. the roughness, the clear coat, and the clear coat roughness. So we've connected that to the first principal shader. Connect those same slots up to the same inputs on all of these other principled shaders. One more to do down here. Oops, not that one. That one. Okay, hopefully that should be everything connected up. So if we come out of this horrible mess using this up arrow, we should get our nice, pretty simple node group input. Yes, we do. That's good. So let's change the name of the actual node group itself. Terrazzo. And let's give it a label as well. Terrazzo. So, there we go, that's good. Let's also change the node group name. 
so that everything's clearly labeled whenever we want to come to it. So the base color obviously changes the background color. I'm going to leave that as white. Um, for color one, just for as, as an example, I'm going to change that. And you can see it's only affected some of those specs. Uh, for color two, we'll try something a bit lavendery. And then for color three, let's use a nice cool color. There we go. So you can see there's different specs controlled by those three colors. And then the main base color is controlled by this top one. The specular I generally leave at around 0.5. That's the glossiness. And then the roughness we can take down to let's say point, um, 0.15. Let's just zoom out a bit so you can see the overall changes. Clear coat, I'm going to whack all the way up to one. That puts a nice glossy coat over the whole thing. And uh, clear coat roughness, I'm going to leave as it is. So let's send that to render and see what we get. Okay, and there we go. A nice confetti terrazzo marble. Not sure what you'd use it for, but I've seen it used in Archviz, so hurrah. Anyway, if you've enjoyed the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to share it with your friends, please do. In the meantime, thanks for watching and please remember to subscribe. Mm -hmm.